I think I timed that right. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on what time of day you're watching this Sunday, whereabouts in the world you are. I'm Mod, this is Euro Truck Simulator 2. Today's soundtrack is Pokemon from Red, Blue, and Yellow. This is selected for us by Pasta. The good old Pastafarian. and he's got his own little Pixelmon series on our Pixelmon server. As to Squirrel and myself, I think we're the only three that are doing a Pixelmon series at the moment. I know Tort streams it, and I think Simon has streamed it. I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, we've got a job on the go. Remember at, last ep at the end of the last episode we were surrounded by trucks for the thumbnail, so I just took a quick screenshot of us not surrounded by trucks at all. It seems when he turn off the game and reload, it's all the things to spawn. Anyway, without further ado, let's let's go. Oh, all the traffic started to spawn back in now. We better get going. Full. We lose our opportunity to rejoin the traffic properly. So how's everybody doing? You doing all good? You doing fine? I'm doing good over here, I tell you now. I'm doing quite good over here. Yesterday, myself, Murtai, Drazar, Drazar's daughter, and Mr. Jones, we all disappeared off to Blackpool for the day. Well, not quite the day. I started work at 7, finished at 12, come back home, immediately jumped back into the car after a very quick change. Anybody come in? No. Although apparently a bus is up ahead of us on the road, even though no traffic's gone past us in the last few minutes. Traffic has a weird way of spoiling in this game, I swear. Yes, anyway, um... We went to Blackpool to look at the lights. And it was it was alright, actually. It was, our first chance. it was our first time pushing Murtai around in her wheelchair, and we had a lot of, honestly, it was a lot of fun. I just went up there thinking, I'm going to push the missus around, that's all I want out of the day. I don't give a crap about the lights, I don't give a crap about shots, I don't give a crap about nothing. So first thing that happens when we get up there, after it took us three hours to get up there because someone had uh, a crash on the M6, unfortunately. Caused a blockage of the entire motorway, about junction 15-16. We so we were sat there for 45 minutes. After about 10 minutes of being stationary, I just thought, yeah, fuck this, I'm turning the engine off. And I think lots of people around me had the same idea as well, because stationary, you're not going anywhere. We had a quick look on the internet, it said blockage, completely blocked, severe blockage, so okay, engine off. The joys of having mobile internet. But we'll get to my phone in a bit, because at the moment I'm using Murtais. But yeah, we get to Blackpool, and everything's good, right? Everything's very good. And where we're going, we'll go. Get to the car park, all's a good one. I have a force of habit of reversing into a parking bay. But whenever I've got a wheelchair in the boot now, it seems I have to drive forwards into a parking bay. Otherwise, it's really, really hard to get the bloody thing out. Yeah, I found that out the fun way. But it went all well. We actually had a fun day out without Murtag being in too much pain or being grumpy from having to walk around everywhere and exacerbating the pain. No, don't do that. Come on, Matilda. Got into the car park, walked up the way. Within five minutes, we found a shop. It's called Thunderbooks. Thunderbooks basically sells all the old Jerry Anderson merchandise you could possibly think of. It was amazing. We're talking Thunderbirds, Captain Scarlet, X91. Was it called X91? But yeah, all the Thunderbird stuff. I was very, very attracted to the model kits of Thunderbird 3 in particular. They had proper fucking kits! Because I, I don't know if you, if you may have, I don't know if you, if you heard, but I do like modelling. Not of the posing, striking a pose for a camera, but of the um, model kits. Airfix style, you know? And the, the Thunderbird kit, free, there's two or three different Thunderbird free kits. One was chibi style, and the other two were sort of slightly deformed compared to what I would consider would be acceptable for Thunderbird free. So I ended up passing on them, but they're only £10 each, considering they're out of production. Okay, now thank you very much. But yeah, um. It was a great little shop I was actually. It was comics, annuals, 
models. Did I mention models? There's quite a few models. DVDs, you name it, it was probably there. I think the only thing they didn't have was full co full size costumes for grown ups to wear. But I think if you'd asked nicely, they would have had them lying around somewhere. It would not have surprised me, it's that kind of shop. So after that, we went to the pier. Tracy's daughter had a, get a bit of a go on a few rides. We sat there, watched her, a lot of fun. And then we went to get something to eat. That was a big roll and a half because someone decided she didn't know what she wanted to eat and it wasn't Mertai. <laughs> Eventually we went to a fish and chip shop which does the best chips in the world. But then um, everybody went there with the th idea of thinking we'll all get a large chips between a pair of us. Because, you know, traditionally when you go to a fish and chip shop, a large chips is literally large. It's huge. You, you're talking a great big bag of the shit, right? You can imagine our surprise when we got a large, it was smaller than a small. And we're like, this is a large. And then we remembered, oh yeah, we're at a tourist resort. How could we possibly forget that this is all about making money? Well, apparently we forgot. But yeah, it filled a hole, just about. But the, the, in all fairness, the chips were gorgeous. Best chips I've had from a chip in a while. We're wondering about, about a bit more, looking for this mysterious comic book shop. Thunderbooks told us that uh, there was a co proper comic book shop. You know, like um, your Another World, Forbidden Planets. There was one of those somewhere around, and it closed at 11, so myself and Mr. Jones were like, okay, okay, we wouldn't mind finding this shop, to be honest with you. But it closes at 11, you say? Okay. 11 o'clock sounds reasonable. We get out the sat nav. Oh, it closes at 7. They lied. So we went back to the car, and we drove all the way up through the entirety of the lights from one end to the other. Oh my god, it took a while because the traffic was moving slow so slowly. Very, very slowly, actually. Very random, very random. But yeah, that's also the only part of the lights I didn't like was right at the beginning when there was all the McDonald's advertising. McDonald's basically paid for a set of about three or four strips of lights so they could do I'm loving it. Thanks McDonald's, you magnificent wankers. Nobody likes McDonald's anyway, but yeah. Well, we do like McDonald's, but when it comes to blatant advertising lights, just really guys, what's the fucking point of that? Can't you just let the people enjoy the illuminations? But yeah, you'd think it's just one strip going from the first pier down to roughly between the second and third pier. No, it keeps on going for a lot longer than that. Because Drazar says it'll take us about an hour, an hour and a half to get through them. I'm thinking, fuck off, mate. I'm looking at the lights, that's all there is. And then we went around the corner. Oh shit, I owe Drazar an apology. And at the end of it, well, it wasn't even at the end of it, there's still another mile or so of lights to go. There's a collection point for uh, donations. I was saying to Murta at this point, it's great that they're actually putting all these on for free. If you get, do get the chance to go to the Blackpool Lights, go have a look, because it's really, really great. It's an, if you get the chance, go in a car as well, because the experience of driving through the lights, especially when you get to the tower, and you get all the overhead, like, all the overhead lights as well, it's, it's, it's an amazing experience. But, right, it's an amazing experience if you're mentally 12 and a half years old, right? If you're a boring career, you might be like, yeah, great, some lights, thanks, fantastic. But towards the end, there was a collection point for donations, and they suggested about £5 per car, and I'm thinking, actually, that's not a bad idea, Murta, you got any money? Because I'd spent all mine on food and buying little knickknacks to take home for people. Murta says, no, you've got all the money. Oh. Oh well. So next year, if we go, or at any point in the future, when we go to the Blackpool Illuminations, I'm going to take double to pay for the for this year, because I... I, I was honestly just really that impressive with the show they put on. There was not just the lights on the side, uh, on the on the seafront, there was also animated models, if you will. Great big ruddy things. Mostly they were of pirates holding swords or people from Arabian Nights holding daggers. Quite worried about that aspect, actually, the, the fact that the only things that are animated moving, in terms of statuettes, models that were lit up, were all holding some sort of, sort of sharp stabbing implement. Very worrying, that. Tune. Well chosen, Pasta. Well chosen.
Very well chosen. But yes, um, it's just one of those things where you, you realise a lot of effort has gone into something and you think, yeah, I really do think I should, if only there was a way I could, you know, cough up towards, you know, it's a way of saying thank you. If I'd paid to see the lights, then I might have demanded something, but because I got it for free, I did, at the end of it, I did actually feel quite compelled. I wanted to throw something in their direction as a thank you. So next time we go Blackpool, I am definitely, definitely. That's close. Too close. Too close. Definitely, definitely going to give them double money to pay to make up for this year. And a big thank you to the guys at the Blackpool Illumination supported all the great show. Seriously, get up there, guys. The only problem I had with the Blackpool Illuminations was I was slightly distracted because my car is still boiling. We had it in for a clutch repair this time last year, and it's never been right ever since. And the cold weather's making it. It's exacerbating the issue, which is basically the revs carrying away and she's overheating a little bit. Poor car is not a happy bunny in traffic anymore. And when we're there, stop starting for about an hour, an hour and a half. The car was not happy at all at the end of it. We struggled for power all day. Even by a 1.25 standards, we struggled for power. And we were on the way home, we got to services about 30, 40 mile out of Blackpool, said our goodbyes, said Redraza, you've been up for a while, you've got further to go to the, than us. He's got an extra half hour to travel compared to us, so we said to him, if you want to put your foot down, go for it, leave us behind, we're going to take it nice and steady, going 60 all the way, because I'm not rushing. Also, because of all the issues we've had with traffic and the lights, we're running quite fucking tight on fuel. Twitch Draz says, why don't you fill up at services? Uh, yeah, there's the key part right there, Draz. Services. Do you know, do, do, I don't know if you guys know, but when you go to a service station at a UK service, if you go to a UK, United Kingdom service station on the motorway, fuel tends to cost an arm and a leg because you got no, you can't get fuel from anywhere else in the vicinity. If you need the fuel desperately, you're going to pay through the fucking tooth for it. And I can't believe they're allowed to do that in this fucking country. But hey, I, it is what it is. Um. Still looking good. Oh god, we're in the Viridian Forest. Awesome. But yeah, we went home. Got We travelled 60 mile an hour all the way. Played some good music. Had a bit of a chit chat with my best mate, Mertai. Um, got home about quarter to midnight. Amazingly, I wasn't even that tired. Considering I'd been up since half six in the morning, it was then... By the time we got the, the, the cats fed and we got everything else in the house sorted... And at this point, I'd like to say thank you to Mrs. Wallowitz and Watson. They went over while we were out to check the cats are okay. They asked us first if they could go check on the cats and we are like, okay, cool. That's, that'd be very much appreciated. We are out longer than we were expecting. But all's well that ends well. So big thank you to you guys for checking on the cats, making sure they're okay. And um, yeah, went upstairs. I went from not even slightly tired to crashed within about five minutes. Give Murtai a hug, and then pff, that's it. Woke up at about ten o'clock this morning. <laughs> Woke up to find out I was wearing all the covers. I don't quite get what, how that happened. I'm gonna guess Murtai threw them on me. But yeah, out like a light, I needed that sleep. Sleep is good. Sleep is overrated. Underrated, underrated, not overrated. I like sleep. I like to... Uh, I, could only, I can manage on four or five hours a night, but oh, when you get the nice long ones, when you just sleep for hours and hours and hours and no interruptions. I feel quite fresh as a result, actually. So what else has happened lately? Because um, I spent a whole 14 minutes or so talking about fucking Blackpool. If you get the chance, go to Blackpool. Highly recommended. Um, what's this from? I don't know this track. Anyway, so I may have mentioned on Twitter my phone's broken. My phone has basically got a issue where the screen and the motherboard don't match up because the ribbon connecting them is broken. Yeah, I know. The ri there's a ribbon these days. Can still, still these days they use ribbons in electronic components. I found that amazing. But 
down, here we go, cut across the traffic. Ha ha ha, nicely done! Oh, we all know what this music is. So, um, the phone's broken. After I've done recording this, set it up to render, I'm going to take a wander into town. I'm going to take my phone to the local sh free shop. Free being the network that provide my internet on my phone. In fact, they provide my phone full stop. And I'm going to go to them and say, hey, my phone's got a two year warranty. It's a year and a half old. Fix it, please. And they'll go, certainly, sir. Could we just check who you are? Blah, 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 blah. That's excellent. Thank you very much. Here's a new phone. It's not going to be how it goes down. I imagine it's going to be a bit more of a fucking rigmarole than that. It's obviously not going to get a free phone out of it. Ah, uh, boss music, awesome. End of motorway. E acres, I hope that's an okay yard. Oh, very kind you let me through. Very kind. At the moment, though, I'm using Murtai's phone. She, for some reason, seems to think that. I Random battle noises in the background. But Murtai seems to think that um, I need an internet phone more than she does. Thank you. That's very kind of him. Seriously, what's with the random noises? Ah, oh, this should be an easy park. So if I drop that into the shop later, it should be repaired and I should be able to pick it up within a week. Which means next Saturday, my first Saturday off in a while, is going to be a busy Saturday because I've ordered new bits of the computer. Basically, you may have heard a constant humming in the background, right? That constant humming is the fans in my case. My case is second hand. Uh, it was given to me by some people I don't overly like anymore. Because they treat me like shit. I mean, you know, I'm all up for friends and stuff, but friendship is a two way street and don't like it when people contact you just to use you for something. I actually quite hate that. So, um, that case is going to be replaced with a nice. It's a black thing with blue lights. It looks alright, but it's a bit small, it's noisy, it's tatty. Why can't I park this though? Seriously, we're all over the place. What's going on? That's a bit skewed, right? Part. Excellent. But I'm get I've got a new case. That doesn't get in stock until tomorrow. And then we're also picking up some RAM. I was given... I already have 8 gig of RAM. I was given another 8 gig by someone who is no longer on Team Talk Studio who is a complete cunt. Oh, I'm sorry, did that come out just like that? I'm so sorry, the words just slipped. And, um, turns out some, one of the sticks is defective. So instead of having 16 gig of RAM, I've only got 12.7. Plus also the RAM I've got in there is DDR3, it's old. So I decided it's a nice chance to upgrade. I won't get much of a speed boost, let's be honest, but it'd be nice to actually, you know, speed up my rendering a bit maybe, or free myself some RAM for multitasking purposes. So, 16 gig of RAM with nice white heat, sh heat sinks all over it to match the case. And then we looked at the delivery charges. It'll cost us £12 to get the stuff delivered to a place of my choosing, probably work, or I could wait a few days 
and it'll cost me five pound to drive there and back. I, I I get to chat. I get to have a road trip with my other half. I'm going to take the road trip. Thank you very much. Let's have a look for a job while we're here. Actually, do we need to rest? That's the point. Let's have a look for resting opportunities. Yeah, I think we should rest up first. Oops. <laughs> I meant to do that. Let's go to Berlin itself and have a look. One thing I'd like to see SCS implementing, changing the subject. On the backs of trailers, the number plates don't match the vehicles. Apparently it's a common thing on the continent where each trailer has its own registration and it's registered to each trailer for each trip. But in the UK, it doesn't quite work like that. Oops. Oops. <laughs> I didn't look that way. My fault. My fault. My fault. But in the UK, you'd have to put your trailer on... You have to put your number plate on the back of the trailer. So that's, that's something I like to see implemented as an optional feature. So you can deselect it. I think that would work best, SCS. What do you reckon? I might go onto the forums after I've done this, actually, and suggest that. Right, everybody. Welcome to Berlin. Money. Recruitment agency. Would be nice to have a garage here in Berlin, I think. Shame we don't have the hundred odd thousand pounds to do that right now. Nor the capacity in loans to take them out, which reminds me we need to pay off some loans again, I think. But honestly, I'm not in a great rush to pay off the loans. Looks like we're going this way. Had to figure out how to get to the repair services, sir. Eh? Don't even care for man. Well, this is a mighty fine and big building. I'm taking my Mercedes to a man garage. Awesome. Repaired. Now someone suggested that um, for the... Well, I'm going to be doing a race across Europe soon, as I may have mentioned in the last episode. Someone says I should paint this. Shit, what's your name again? Miro? Mito? Ah, you person, you. <laughs> says I should paint Matilda gold. <laughs> no. I don't like that. Maybe if we took the colour she is. Where is it anyway? I think we could do that one maybe. No. That's the one we currently have. Can we have a metallic here? No, we can't choose metallic on this palette. That's a shame. Yes, we cancel the modifications, don't care for them. Then we're going to sleep up and we're going to get a job ready for the next time. Let's build a thing to the sleeping spot. Yeah, because I think today, just getting on with the job, has allowed us to just get into the flow of the episode, I think. Just a bit. Oh! Oh! Money! Money! We're rich! More money. Once more. 205,000 pounds. Yep, yeah, we're rich. <laughs> That's how we get rich. We just um, go to sleep three times. And then we buy ourselves a garage and fill it up with things. Garage manager. What have we got here? We, got, we could put another two trucks there. Or we could put another two trucks there. Or we could buy a garage in Berlin. And then put a truck there. Also, this is not us buying every single garage in the UK, is it? Well, actually, we don't have a job, so we could actually quick travel to Birmingham. And then travel across to a different town. 
and my chef garage there. All sorts of possibilities. Profit for the last seven days, £670,000. I like that number. Average daily profit, 95000 We're raking in the money, the money, the money. And the bank is looking. We can repay the smaller loan of the two. But is it worth it just to save us two grand? Oh, Jigglypuff music. Let's call it there, guys. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, a thumbs up would be much appreciated. Dream big. Don't forget to leave your comments and shit in the comments below. Dream big. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.